banned, banned, banned. Society's favorite word when approached by something we don't understand. This is the Cybeco, an early 2000s electronic device marketed to tweens as a portable computer. It was basically a calculator with an antenna. It had no internet access, no way to make or receive a phone call, and a short wireless range of 300 feet or 91 meters. So why would my school ban these? It's not like cell phones, laptops, and high-speed internet didn't exist. Although most portable devices weren't multi-feature, do-everything products. Cybeco offers PDA-like features. Well, the Cybeco so, wireless so, entertainment so, system lets kids play games online, locate other kids within 300 feet that also have a Cybeco, as well as doubling as a day planner and internet hookup. Usually, each device was designed to do one thing very well, such as make a phone call or listen to a song. This was a time when even the first Windows-based mobile operating system didn't exist, and the iPhone wouldn't be released for seven more years. Nonetheless, people were uncomfortable with this piece of technology. It had about as much power as a Game Boy Advance. Actually, it was less, but due to advertising, many thought it was much more powerful. In May 2000, the Cybeco launched nationwide in the US. Roughly the size of a Game Boy, it was described as a mobile gaming machine, an electronic organizer, two-way communication device, MP3 player, and friend finder. The company also claimed it could browse the internet as well as send and receive emails. All of these features for the launch price of about $150. The unit cost, combined with an aggressive celebrity marketing campaign, ensured great demand and the Cybeco sold over 500,000 units in its first year. It was even in the movie Big Fat Liar. Oh, I definitely wanted one. Yeah, I got one. This is the year 2000. We just beat Y2K. Elian Gonzalez is a huge political story, and the movie Final Destination is released, petrifying audiences in a way they never knew possible. The only thing scarier is that we as a society decided to give tweens the single most powerful, capable, wireless device in existence. Or so we were told. The social stigma surrounding technology has made tiny changes since my K-12 days. As a child, I was told to never use my real name on the internet, that by doing this, someone, somewhere, with this knowledge could find me, could harm me. And as an adult, with the rise of social media, I was encouraged to do exactly the opposite, registering profiles with my legal name. Considering the availability of GPS technology, and services like MapQuest, which will give you step-by-step -step directions to a destination, wouldn't the threat of being harmed by sharing my real name be even greater? So what does this have to do with the Cybeco and why my school banned it? Like many products, companies will overmarket and overpromise certain capabilities. This was true with the Cybeco. These little guys pack a big punch. They're capable of just about everything from multiplayer interactive games to wireless communication that can be beamed to other users up to 300 feet away. Here's a sweet one from Cybeco. Cybeco. Download killer games. It's got a monster organizer. It's right in your hand. Oh yeah, it's wireless. Wow! That's the wireless star! Wireless chat, email, internet, free games, organizer! It's Everything! C-Y-B-I-K-O The first red flag should have been the box. This is the biggest toy for the season. It was incredibly flashy, with bright colors and very 2000s graphics. Look close. The internet they are referring to was their own website. Marketing. You could visit the site using a computer to download free apps and games that could later be transferred to the Cybeco. Technically, it was an MP3 player. That is, if you ordered the add-on attachment, which allowed you to connect flash memory and headphones. Gaming was possible with the quality of a Game Boy or TI-83 graphics, but was extremely awkward to play given the button layout. And then the antenna. It had a maximum range of 300 feet using radio frequency. 
This was cut down from the advertised 1,000 feet due to US regulations. The wireless features out of the box included two-way text messaging, as well as the ability to play some multiplayer games device to device, and a preloaded app, which was kind of like Friend Finder at the time, would vibrate your device when you were in proximity of someone else who had a Cybeco. Owners can put in the kind of kid they are and the kind of kid they want to meet. When compatible kids converge, their Cybercos are vibrate. It could kind of do email. If you're inside, it goes through walls, and you can email whoever's in your area. You can talk to them directly. You would write an email, and the device would save it to memory as unsent until it detected an internet connection. Then, using the included serial cable, you had to connect it to a computer with internet, and then the email would send. Now, if you wanted to send an email wirelessly, the antenna was pretty much useless unless you had two Cybicos. One device had to physically be attached to a computer that had an internet connection. This device would create a wireless access point only accessible to other Cybicos. The other Cybico would then be able to use the antenna to connect to the wireless access point, sending the email. This access point was only good for sending or receiving emails. There was no way to use this access point to browse the web as no browser app existed. The company claimed to have plans to implement an internet add-on device, but the plans were scrapped and no such product ever hit the market. Finally, the keyboard was just terrible. A stylus was included and marketing materials made it seem like it would work decently well for everyday tasks such as jotting down quick notes, but it didn't work well. It was just the right button size that made it frustrating to navigate. Using the stylus was slow, and an attempt at using your fingers would result in unwanted keys pushed at the same time. The Cybico was an overhyped PDA. It wasn't great at one particular task, let alone the many it claimed to be able to do. Then why would my school ban it? Why threaten punishment for an underwhelming electronic organizer? It was required at a minimum to remain in your locker and students would receive in-school suspension for having it out in class. Cell phones were also not allowed, but there was no policy outright banning them and teachers were much more lenient when classmates got caught using them. One day in school, I remembered hearing over the intercom, because these devices have an internet connection, they are no longer allowed. That was the administration's only explanation. It's hard today to paint a picture of what the societal consensus was toward technology in the early 2000s. But believe it or not, whatever it used to be, it hasn't changed all that much. My school most likely banned the Cybico, or what is effectively a calculator with an antenna, for a few reasons. With misinformation, fear, and control at the forefront. Your kids could be better connected than you. The Cybeco's abilities were constantly advertised as a portable wireless computer with internet capabilities. Cybeco, a wireless entertainment device. Your Cybeco's have internet functions and wireless capabilities as well. Wireless local email gaming friend finding planner interactive uh, teeny bopper whew, like Palm Pilot type of thing. And although the company stated at one point that they would release an add-on device to actually give the Cybeco internet, this product was never released. The device never really had any true internet, and a 10-second Google search would have revealed this information to anyone looking. Given the belief that these devices were connected to the World Wide Web, I'm sure the school administration could have only imagined what potential harm could come to little Johnny or Susie from using one of these. And given the full keyboard, as well as an earth-shattering, unbelievable 300-foot range, what would the parents say if a child were bullied in a chat room? I'm excited about getting it, because now I can like talk to my friend. They claim that the range is 150 feet indoors and 300 feet outdoors, but we had trouble chatting from a mere 20 feet away. Let's not forget that many middle schoolers during this time had actual cell phones, many of which had real functioning web browsers, which were not banned. Like an anti-drug campaign, the school just said no. What is a more primitive human response than to outright banish something that is not understood due to misinformation? And that's what they did. No reason to try and implement new technology or ideas in a way that could benefit the students. 
just a continuation of the status quo. They're actually adopting this technology into the schools. For instance, they can give quizzes with it. You could argue that these devices could be used for cheating, but given the size, how could anyone hide these? Even if it's not very practical to use to cheat during a test, I think that's one of its appeals. The Chicago company downplays the notion of high-tech cheating and claims teachers welcome the gizmo. So why does any of this matter? Who cares if an electronic toy wasn't allowed by a school? The underlying issue is not the Cybeco itself, but rather the specific adoption methods we as a society make towards technology and how this method hasn't changed a whole lot in the past 20 years. In today's modern world, it may seem like because everyone has a smartphone that we have taken the time to learn and understand our devices. But I would argue that's not the case and that the guidelines to mass adoption of technology have no real blueprint. That misinformation, fear, and control still rule our decision-making. That capable, GPS-locating, data-mining smartphone devices, which everyone has, are much more dangerous than the incapable Cybeco ever was. The company released an updated product called the Cybeco Extreme later that year. It was a little bit faster, had a little bit more storage, but ultimately still couldn't do a whole lot. It's a scary premise that those in charge can point out a mirage of danger and at the same time stare at an actual fire and tell everyone to go back to class. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to see future content. Thank you for watching.